Hello there, welcome to DNA Deeds YouTube channel. In the previous lectures, we learned how to generate the DNA fragments, right? So now we must consider what are the different strategies or methods we have to join the them and create artificially recombinant DNA molecules. So generation of DNA fragments will join them. So joining is very critical step in the molecular cloning. So there are three ways to join them. So th those things will be discussed in this lecture. The first one is cohesive or blended DNA fragments. The cohesive or blended DNA fragments are generated by the DNA fragments digestion with the restriction in the nucleus. Once they are generated with the restriction digestion, they can be ligated with the help of one molecule called as a DNA ligase. This is the first method. Second method is whenever you generate, whenever you have DNA fragments in your hand, right? They are not generated, they are not uh, digested by the restriction in the nucleus. They have blended. Right? So in that case, what you can do is you can go for homopolymer tailoring. Homopolymer tailoring means addition of any nucleotide, nucleotide choice of U at the end of at the three prime end of DNA fragments by an enzyme called as terminal deoxynucleotide transferase. This enzyme have a ability to add the add the any choice of nucleotide at three prime end of DNA fragments. Then you can add this tail ring to all both the vector and insert. Then followed by DNA ligation. Third choice is you have DNA fragments in your hand. You don't want to go for uh, restriction digestion. You don't want to go for homopolymer tailoring, but still there is a way to uh, join them with the help of linkers and adapters. Linkers and adapters. Linkers, you can add linkers to the your your uh, gene of interest, right? What is a linker? Linker is a small DNA, uh, small molecule which is having the restriction site, which can be added to the uh, your DNA of interest, then later followed by the restriction digestion, which can lead to the production of cohesive ends. Then you can ligate with the vector. There also again ligase is useful. And adapters, adapters are the DNA molecules, which are free having free formed restriction site, uh, cohesive site, rest, uh, cohesive site. So linkers or adapters can be stitched to the DNA fragments, then followed by the ligation. So in the process of joining of DNA molecules, irrespective of whether they are produced through the restriction endonuclease or homopolymer tailoring or linkers adapters, the two DNA molecules has to be joined by usage of, by using the enzyme called as DNA ligase. Today's topic is DNA ligase. Let us see the introduction part of uh, DNA ligase. You see, by joining the three prime OH and pi prime phosphate terminate to form a phosphodiester bond, DNA ligases are the essential of gen genome integrity. They establishes the phosphodiester bond between three prime OH and pi prime phosphate. Means they catalyze the formation of phosphodiester bond between the two adjacent nucleotides, right? And these DNA ligase are essential of genome integrity. So whenever there are nicks or breaks, they're again joined by the DNA ligase. So integrity is all depends on the presence of uh, DNA ligase and their function. They're very important in the DNA replication, you know, DNA replication, repair, 
and recombination. These are three three R's. Ligases are required for in uh, replication, repair, and recombination. Replication means replication is semi discontinuous. One is lagging strand, other one, other one is uh, lagging, leading and lag. Lag lagging means what? Semi disc. Okazaki fragments are formed. Okazaki fragments are again stitched by the DNA ligase one. Repair. Whenever the DNA is exposed to the catastrophic agents, there will be a there is a chance of damage. Again, the damage is uh, is repaired and repaired DNA uh, nucleotides are uh, you know stitched back to the normal by DNA ligase. Recombination requires the breaking to you know to uh, join with the new DNA. Then again, re re again there is a requirement of uh, ligation. So they are essential for DNA replication, repair, and recombination in all organism. They are universal. Every organism consists of DNA ligase. They are very much required for the cell function. Yeah, ligases, ligases were critical reagents in the development of molecular cloning and many subsequent ramifications of DNA biotechnology. So you cannot imagine the production of recombinant clones without contribution of DNA ligase, right? You produce the DNA fragments, you get the DNA or you get the gene of your interest from the anywhere. It has to be ligated with the vector, right? In that case, ligase is a very critical in that one. So with the ligase, you can join the vector and insert because they are critical reagents in the molecular cloning. So next slide, we'll see the types of uh, ligases we have. There are two types of uh, ligases, eukaryotic and prokaryotic. Eukaryotic ligases requires the ATP as a cofactor, whereas prokaryotic requires the NADPH as the cofactor. But there is an exceptional that T4 DNA ligase requires the ATP. Yeah, T4 DNA ligase, you see, let, let us look into the properties of T4 DNA ligase. Molecular weight is 68 KDA. And cofactors for T4 DNA ligase, magnesium and ATP, as I told you that. It can ligate the both cohesive ends as well as blunt ends. It can ligate the DNA molecules which are having the cohesive ends or blunt ends also. Temp what are the templates for the T4 DNA ligase? Nixon duplex DNA, RNA, DNA, RNA hybrid. Cannot act on single strand DNA. Yeah, let now move to the E. coli DNA ligase. It is 75 KDA and it requires the NADPH as a cofactor. It can only see or establish the phosphodiester bond between the cohesive ends and it acts on only DNA and DNA, right? So this is all about uh, uh, you know, introduction of uh, ligases. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the ligation mechanism. Thank you all for watching. See you again with the one more video.